Thank you, Alisa. Thank you very much. And now handing over to Neil. So we're going to talk about managing content security policy and same site cookies. Jumping right in, what is content security policy? This is not going to be an in-depth discussion. Uh, we will definitely uh, do this at a very high level. So uh, content security policy or CSP is an HTTP response header that can manage uh, the capabilities of browsers, primarily what JavaScript can and cannot execute. Once you have it in place, it has some pretty nice assurances about what your app can and cannot do or what you know, new functionality someone can and cannot introduce, which sometimes uh, limits your application, but sometimes that might be a good thing. Um, some front end libraries are still not very compatible with content security policy, but as time goes on, that's less and less true. So I show you this partial policy, not because I want to go over it in detail, but just to demonstrate that this, this semicolon delimited bunch of garbage uh, is pretty powerful, um, but it's definitely not easy. It takes a lot of consideration, testing, experimenting, planning. Uh, it's about a thousand times more difficult to apply retroactively than if you had started from the beginning. But let's be honest, nobody applies CSP from day one. If they know about what CSP is at day one, um, I would be surprised too. Um, really, the primary thing is you're trying to avoid unwanted JavaScript execution, and that's dictated by the script source directive. And the goal is eventually to remove these two values that say unsafe inline and unsafe eval. The, the inclusion of the word unsafe is very intentional to say you should not be doing this unless you have a reason to. Unsafe inline allows your, your typical sort of uh, you know, reflected XSS or stored XSS in a page. Um, that JavaScript is inline. Um, a lot of applications are able to extract all their inline JavaScript such they don't have to allow inline JavaScript and they've effectively taken away a lot of XSS. Uh, the eval one is a little more nuanced. Uh, the eval code and the eval function in JavaScript evaluates JavaScript as code, which is another primary vector of XSS. Um, unfortunately, it, it's a little more subtle. Uh, for example, jQuery, if you were to insert a snippet of a script tag into a live DOM, um, that would not trigger an inline script violation. Historically, that would actually trigger an eval. So it's not very intuitive sometimes either. So you have a nice mix of things that are both not obvious, counterintuitive, uh, very opaque, and hard to understand. Um, but the goal is to uh, eliminate cross-site scripting. That's a good goal that we work towards. Simply defining a policy for your website is very hard. Being able to coordinate a policy across many human beings is hard. Google recently did some research showing that the majority of the policies on the internet had little to no effect, um, which is not great. Uh, <clears throat> CSP does have a report only mode so that you can sort of test things out, but unfortunately a lot of people never make it out of the report only phase. But like I said, CSP when implemented properly is really good at GitHub. We are always worried about XSS, but we are significantly less worried than uh, applications that don't have a policy such as ours. We do have a lot of confidence in it and uh, it's worked out pretty well for us. So we're uh, in some ways more worried about you injecting a link on our website that looks official than you getting an access, actual XSS execution on our website. So to be successful with CSP, you can't just plop this in your Nginx file. This is not meant to be a static header that your ops people set and you as an application owner have nothing to do with, you need to be in control of your policy. You need to be able to find a global policy and you need to be able to modify that policy at runtime for whatever needs you, for whatever need you have. And, you know, yes, content security policy is a header. It is a string. You can generate a string. This is not rocket science, but given the complexity of CSP, I really think people should have more purpose-built tools for managing the policy and abstracting away a lot of the hard stuff. Um, this was more important historically where you know, implementations across browsers greatly differed, um, but still today, I would argue you need a library to manage it. So your global policy should be as tight as reasonably allowed for the majority of your website. You should not be making a global exception. For example, if your admin page contains a little bit of inline JavaScript for your WYSIWYG editor, you don't want to enable inline JavaScript for your entire application. Um, follow the principle of secure by default and allow people to sort of opt out of this super strict mode CSP. 
provide easy ways for humans to adjust the policy as needed. Instead of asking someone, what should the CSP for this page be? Which yeah, is, and uh, assuming like when you open, um, what's going on? <laughs> okay. Uh, instead, of, instead of asking someone what the CSP should be for the page, that's a terrible question to ask. Um, what about this page is special that it needs an exception? Um, asking that question makes someone justify why they need to change the policy. Um, sometimes the required modifications are a little more than we're comfortable with, but because it is limited to one endpoint, one user, one whatever, we're okay with allowing protect, you know, more dangerous activity. And by providing these familiar APIs for adjusting the policy, you can hook something into your, your DevOps pipeline to simply, you know, a static analysis tool or, or even just a simple regular expression to look for these methods and these common ways of modifying your policy. So the security team can then go in and review these exceptions to this policy. Now, taking a step back before we talk about the code to accomplishment, I'm going to give the worst explanation of the model view controller pattern ever. A real programmer will probably cringe, but I'm going to describe it as Rails presents it to my brain. Um, the model is something that represents data. In Rails, the simple example is it represents a row in the database and its foreign key relations. Um, it really just means a bunch of data. Uh, a controller takes the incoming HTTP request and does stuff with the data. The view takes this data after the controller has done stuff and turns it into something that can be read. In this case, we're talking about the view generates the HTML from the data that the controller pulled out of the models. Again, apologies to any real programmers. The model isn't really a place where you would manage content security policy. The controller is absolutely where you'd want to do it. And sometimes even the view is appropriate. And let's go over those cases. So for anyone who doesn't understand Ruby, uh, apologize. I know people have their own opinions on the language, but I'm going to try and, and explain what's going on here without getting into too much detail. At the very top there, we have the application controller. This is the controller from which all other controllers will inherit from. So we define a method that simply calls append content security policy directives and has this funky looking thing even for Rubyus that says look for a constant called CSP exceptions. And we have a subcontroller that subclasses from application controller that defines this constant. In this case, we're going to add foo.com to the list of frame sources. Now, if there was no frame source, it would create it. Otherwise, it would just sort of tack it onto the end of the list. The line below that says, before action, add CSP exceptions, only show. That is, that is Railsism for call this method anytime the show method is called. In a controller, each method represents an endpoint, essentially. So by saying only show, I'm saying I only want to frame foo.com on the show action and not for example, index. Um, that's great. That's the very simple case. Like I have this, this endpoint, there's, this only does this one thing on this one page. I want to add it to this one endpoint or maybe the whole controller or half the endpoints, whatever. You get the flexibility with the built-in functionality of Rails. Now at the bottom, we have a more flexible approach. Like this is inside the code of the index function. We want to append some more content security policy directives. Now this feature enabled is a made up function because it can be anything. Uh, is the user logged in? Is it uh, an employee? Do they have a specific feature enabled just for that subset of users? Is it a Tuesday? Does the current hour end in a three? Um, there, it's really flexible. You can do whatever you want and you need that flexibility to support all use cases. Now I talked about the views thing. Uh, I'm sure this violates some principle of programming too, but again, I'm not a real programmer but I make things that work. So we have a reusable component that's perhaps shared across various parts of the site. These sites may or these components may or may not be related. Maybe it's just like a donate now button, whatever, this is contrived, but this little snippet of HTML is reused everywhere. And we may not necessarily know a controller is calling this, but we don't really care. We're more focused on what is in that reusable widget so we can make these policy changes within the reusable widget itself. And the bottom part is just another feature that I think is pretty necessary for most content security policy rollouts, but CSP has this concept of uh, a nonce tag. So you have a script tag with a nonce attribute that has a one-time use value. And if that value matches what is in the header itself, that script can execute even if you don't allow inline scripts. So you'd be able to whitelist individual inline scripts that an attacker in theory wouldn't have access to the nonce so they couldn't insert it. This little piece of JavaScript here We'll generate the nonce, set the nonce in the tag, and also set the value in the header. 
So you don't have to do anything to manage the header yourself. You're just like, I need to run this piece of JavaScript. I cannot run inline JavaScript. I have a function that lets me run inline JavaScript. Another common use case is just, you need a completely different policy whatsoever. Um, this can happen in a lot of cases in GitHub. This happens on our static 404 page. Uh, the 404 page doesn't need a whole lot of functionality and it's certainly far, far different from what the actual website needs. So we have this handy function at the bottom for render 404, calls a method called set static CSP. That one sort of overrides the global policy for that request itself. Um, I would say within the GitHub application, we have maybe 12 different policies and hundreds of individual one-off modifications to the policy um, in theory, which have all been closely reviewed. So that's all about content, content secure policy. We're gonna move on to uh, same site cookies. Um, this is a newer technology. A lot of people think it's uh, a, a silver bullet. It's going to solve a lot of CSERF problems. And that's, that's, that's true in a lot of ways, but not all. Uh, unfortunately, the same site cookies are in, a, in an interesting state. Chrome is trying to roll out same site lacks um, by default. I'll explain that in a little bit later. Uh, due to the current situation and the difficulties they likely encountered, they have now gone back on that. But the goal is eventually to make all cookies have at least same site lacks. Same site refers to the new attribute itself, which can have the values of none, strict, or lacks. None is sort of, was sort of an afterthought um, when things started breaking, where we do need cross-site cookies sometimes. Um, that frequently comes up in SAML. For example, if you have a redirect or a post from a third-party site, if you were to drop those cookies, well, you've just ruined the whole transaction. So same site none says go back to the current state of how cookies are by default today. Strict, uh, unfortunately, sounds really cool, but is not really that useful in practice. Um, strict will not send cookies unless you are essentially coming from and going to the same site. So if you were to click a link from your email or a search engine or a chat client or a third party site, and I went to GitHub and our cookies were all strict, you would be logged out and we'd have no idea who you were until you hit refresh, um, which is not a good user experience. We do, do, we do set one of our same site cookies as strict, but only because we have another cookie with the same value set to lax and we compare them from time to time to make sure you are doing a site to site uh, post, for example. Uh, lax is sort of the, the Goldilocks in between. This provides a lot of uh, protective functionality. If you have an image or a form on a third party site that posts back to GitHub, the cookies will not be sent. Um, you don't have the CSERF token anyways, but that's not really the point. Um, the internet by default sends cookies everywhere. If you make a request to github.com on any site, those cookies would have gone along with it. But now that we are starting to apply same site lax, they get dropped along the way. Uh, but like CSP, every great control is not exactly the most user-friendly thing and comes with plenty of gotchas. Uh, Rails added the ability to mark all same site cookies as lax and now they do not because everything breaks. Um, especially retroactively, it's, it's, if you have a third party interaction, your website will break. Um, they definitely did not go with strict, uh, but even this is a problem. Um, at GitHub, we're starting to incrementally roll out same site cookie protection to everyone, but we can't do that if it's an all or nothing thing. And if it was all or nothing thing, I mean, people don't like it when you can't use GitHub. Um, that's, that's one thing I've been reminded of um, quite frequently. But, uh, so we need something a little more flexible here. So as I already mentioned, um, the Chrome rollout and rollback was kind of not so great. Um, the getting the internet to set same site equals none and all their cookies didn't seem like something the internet could accomplish. So Chrome had to add this weird fallback where if you don't set a same site cookie, it'll treat it as same site none, but only for two minutes after it was created. So that's not really very intuitive and it's very hard to test and it leads to a lot of confusion. Um, but if you have a nice friendly library to set things, you can experiment with things and you can test things on, on your employees and you can roll things out. And that same library has the same functionality where, um, you know, dynamically at runtime, you can override the cookie policy for the application. Um, we had to set same site num on our SAML cookies, like I had mentioned, so that they would work. Um, and that worked. 
But the problem was when we wanted to try applying same site lax to more cookies, more things broke. So you see in the, the original one, we have none for only those two tokens. In the bottom one, we still keep the none for those two tokens. We add a lax except for those two tokens plus two more. Um, anytime you see underscore legacy, you can assume that some janky workaround was necessary. And it was. So Safari, the not, not the most recent version, some version is listed here. If you set a cookie with same site none, uh, Safari would do quite the opposite of what you meant and would treat that as same site strict. Um, that's not exactly great and it kind of breaks a lot of things too. So we actually have to set two cookies and then when we read them, we just sort of fall back to the other one. So it doesn't break in Safari, it doesn't break in Chrome, it rolls back to the original protection, but all of our other cookies are fine. Unfortunately, what I found out when making this presentation was um, this was not actually true and we, had, we were setting a lax cookie on our legacy token as well, but in the 5% of users who we had applied it to, apparently either nobody ran into it or nobody let us know, um, but we, will, we are currently back to 0% of users and hope to ramp up maybe tomorrow. Uh, since we're at a security research meetup, I should give a shout out to our maintainer advisories. And if anyone might have been thinking, hmm, dynamic uh, code to apply string manipulations to something that lives in the header of an HTTP request, what could go wrong? Uh, again, it's a semicolon delimited uh, thing. So injecting semicolons is not going to work out so well. And injecting new lines is not going to work out so well. Um, thankfully, the new line thing was mitigated by some default behavior in Rails. So the impact of these were more or less you could disable CSP for a request and not necessarily get header injection. Um, and there's also a third one that is currently open. Uh, so this is what happens when you uh, treat a string as a string and not apply the actual grammar from a spec. But that's it. Um, just you know, create a library that is easy to use, easy to audit, takes away a lot of the hard things, abstracts away as much as possible, and provides as much flexibility as you can. And definitely do not set this in your Nginx file. Thanks. Thank you, Anita. That was great. Um, okay, folks. So thank you very much to all presenters. That was awesome. So uh, I hope that uh, people also on Twitch enjoyed it. Um, and it has been recorded, so you will be able to replay this uh, when it will be available on our website. Um, so now uh, for those who are in this meeting, we will move to the um, networking, uh, networking session. So we will try something here. We will try to create rooms where we will shuffle people in these rooms randomly for five minutes speed dating uh, sessions. So what I will ask you is to grab a snack and a drink, kind of to recreate the meetup, uh, uh, meetup ambience. So take one minute to grab a snack, grab a drink, and then come back and you will be invited in uh, your respective rooms. And here you can find some icebreaker ideas, but I'm pretty sure you won't need them. Uh, okay, so see you in one minute in the in the rooms. <laughs>